Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Chastain, and I'm going to do a brief demonstration of how to use a vision assistant for FRC uh, to develop the script that can be used for image processing and, uh, and making the robot better. So the vision assistant tool is actually provided for us when we install the utilities uh, from the NI National Instruments Lab View install CD and the updates. And this tool is actually stored in all programs, National Instruments directory. Slide down and you'll find Vision Assistant 2012. And by this time, it's probably going to be 2013. But this will be the executable that you can then to follow and do the actually do the scripts that I'm about to launch. So the one thing that's been lost in the discussion is the uh, sample images which are part of the tutorial that's provided on the United website. And if you're trying to do this and you'd like to get a copy of those sample images, by all means send me an email and I can send them to you. So when we launch the tool, the first thing it asks us if we want to open images, acquire images, or use the solution wizard. Uh, acquiring images means that we're going to bring in the images from a camera, so we're not going to do that. What I want to do is examine the sample of images that we were provided or from another source. At any rate, they're already in my computer, so I'm going to open. The sample images that are provided that I'd send you a copy of are these pictures of magic markers, which are used to track the, the colors across the screen. So it looks like there's about six of them. So I'm going to open those up. And what that, what that does is bring those images into the buffer up here. And you'll see we have six images. And I can, stroll, I can uh, scroll through them using these controls up here. And then this right-hand arrow brings them to the whatever image is, is selected to the working uh, desktop that we're going to be using to look at our our uh, script. On the left hand side we have the toolbar for the menus and uh, the processing function menu is first and there's a selection of choices there. It's worthwhile going through and trial and error figure out what these are all about because that way you'd be able to use the tool more to your advantage and um, what, what we want to achieve at this point is basically developed a script that will measure between two color sets that we've been able to identify on the screen. So the first thing to do that, to be able to do that, is to identify the color image. And so what I'm picking for that process or for that step is a color, color pattern matching. So I'm going to open up that step, create a template that we're going to compare uh, the screen too, and at this point I have to create a new template. So first thing we're going to do is, is look for the, uh, let's say the blue image. So I get the rectangle selector, pick out a rectangle. In this case I'm choosing part white and part blue so that I'm not confusing any of the background color with my template. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to give it a name that it stores in my directory. Uh, we're going to call this blue cap. Now I want to test to see how satisfactory that template is as I kind of walk through the images by running or clicking on this icon. I run the script once and then step through my the series of my uh, images. So we're going to step through each of the images in the buffer and you can see the templates able to identify in the right hand location it's identified the left hand location and again we we created it in the middle so it's identifying that there each image produces a score uh, in this case we're reading a 944 first for how satisfactory that image recognition is and that is used in the setting where the minimum score is what allows a particular image to show up. If that, if that number is too low, 
we can find ourselves recognizing or identifying uh, incorrect images. And so we want to avoid that as much as possible. But in this case, it looks like we're getting a good, strong score. And so we're going to leave our minimum score at, uh, at a high number. All right, so we've been able to create a, a step that identifies the color matching blue. We're going to do the same thing again, color matching pattern, for let's take a green, green uh, template. So we're going to create a template. And this time, we're going to create the uh, same kind of template from the green cap. So we're going to get a rectangle that it covers a fairly good portion of the screen. We're going to label this green cap. And that's used to pick up the template. Again, we're going to step through the, the images and see if it follows the green cap around the screen. And it looks like it does. So in this case, we can leave the score at a pretty high setting. Again, 954 seems like here's an 871. So certainly I don't want to be that high. So it looks like we can do an 850 for our score weight, weighting. And the advantage of that is that it eliminates any possible um, misidentifications, as long as it doesn't miss one of them. OK. So at this point, I've got two steps in my script um, complete. The first one identifies the blue cap. The second one identifies the, the green cap. Now I want to measure the, the distance between them. And for that, I go to the machine vision menu, pick out calipers. And I'm, I'm basically saying, OK, between these two locations we found in previous steps, measure the distance between them. And you'll see if it gives me a pixel distance for that distance on the screen. So let's step through now my script and see if it works in every location. So I'm measuring from the blue to the green. And it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. So at this point, we have a satisfactory script that that does what we want it to do. So I'm going to save this script for later use. And we're going to call it Save As. I'm going to put it in the same location that uh, my images are in. And we're going to call it Blue to Green. And save it. Now, at the same time, let's start a new script and see if we can identify uh, an image for maybe these characters, which say Expo. So the thing I would use for that is a pattern. Um, the step I want to use is a pattern matching step. But if we, if we make that selection here, you'll notice we get an error because we have a 32-bit image. And this particular step only supports 8-bit. So the reason we didn't have that problem before, well, we didn't use pattern matching. But for starters, we're going to extract a uh, color plane. Let's see what this does for us. Since we're not looking at colors, let's just have a something gives us a good strong black and white image. So I'm extracting the red plane. And let's go back to our pattern matching to see if that's adequate enough conversion. All right. So now it's able to take this. So this is an 8-bit grayscale image. We're going to generate a new template. We want to select this this pattern in the center where it says Expo. Looks like it's maybe going to work for us. Save this as Expo. Probably have to replace the one that's there. And now let's see what it follows around the screen, or whether it can track 
that pattern when it shows up in different locations. All right, so I'd kind of like for it to, to recognize that one, and it doesn't seem to be. And it doesn't seem to recognize the half images that we're kind of coming up with. So one of the reasons that it could be having a problem is we don't have our field of, of view quite wide enough. Uh, what we're going to do is play with the settings, reduce the, the minimum score, for starters. Okay, by doing that, it, it did recognize this. You know, notice it only got a 711 as a score. So, and it recognized this one with a thousand, which is where I started. Here's one 618, 616, 493, 541. So it looks like I can reduce the score to 400. And um, maybe be able to catch at least all the, the true positives without picking up any false positives. All right. So at least in the six images that I have, this, this particular step seems to work okay. What this is giving me is an X and Y position of that location. If I took this information and... This refers to the X and Y, which is the, both the horizontal is X and Y is a vertical. And you'll notice on my indicator here, wherever I move my cursor on the screen, it gives me the, those two locations. So here, the top left is 0, 0. This particular image is somewhere in the neighborhood of 260, uh, 286 and 133 and it's reporting 285 and 135, so it's right about there. The point being, um, the first number is my X location, and if I wanted, if I wanted the robot to track this, anything that was larger than, or any X value that was larger than 160, which is center of the screen, I turn to the right, anything that showed up with a score less than 160, I'd tell the robot to turn to the left. And so as we strobe through these, you'll notice that 130, uh, excuse me, 168 is the X position. I tell the robot to go straight because we have it in the center of the screen. Here 277 means that the image is to the right, so the robot needs to turn to the right, back in the center. It's 51, which is much less than the 168, so we, we turn to the left. At any rate, that gives us a completed script now that is able to track that pattern, at least in the images that we provided. So I'm going to save the script and be able to use it later. So let's call, I want to save it where I had that way before. So let's call this Expo Track. All right, so uh, this is the extent of, this, of the tutorial. If you got any questions, by all means, shoot me an email. But it's worthwhile playing with these images to understand what the Vision Assistant can do as far as generating scripts. The next webinar we will do will take these scripts and confront them into LabVIEW. Thank you for attending.